This video was made possible thanks to the generosity of our gracious patrons. You guys are awesome. Hello everybody and welcome to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name is Martin. And my name is Alex. Today we have some new commanders to the channel as well as some fan favourites. We also have some very degenerate win conditions make appearances, so viewers of a weak disposition should turn away now. Still here? Good, let's see what those opening hands are. My commander is set on Crozen Protector. I keep an opening hand of Lanawar Druid, Elvish Harbinger, Sumberwald Sage, Zendikar Resurgent, Wirewood Lodge and two forests. My commander is Tuvasa the Sunlit. My opening hand consists of Land Tax, Mystic Remora, Eel Umbra, Flooded Strand, an island and a forest. Dave, who is new to magic, is playing his Anya, Merciless Angel deck. He keeps an opening hand containing Magus of the Wheel, Desolation Giant, Victory's Herald, Cold Steel Heart, Meteor Blast, Drifting Meadow and the Plains. And finally, Phil's commander is Whisper, Blood Liturgist. His opening hand is made up of Fleshbag Marauder, Phyrexian Rager, Liliana Vess, Damnation and Three Swamps. I win the die roll and start things off by playing a forest and casting Arbor Elf. I then pass to Alex. I play a Flood Strand and immediately sacrifice it to put a Temple Garden into play, losing 3 life. I then cast Land Tax and end my turn. Dave plays Drifting Meadow and passes the turn. Phil puts a Swamp and passes to Martin. I play a Forest and then cast my Commander, set on Crows and Protector. I then tap set on to cast Elvish Mystic and end my turn. In my upkeep, I search my library for a plains, an island, and a forest, and put them into my hand thanks to land tax. I then play the island that I searched for and cast Ground Seal, completely shutting off Phil's deck. Sorry not sorry. I draw a card on the seal, discard it down to seven, and pass to Dave. Dave plays a plains and then casts Cold Steel Heart. He chooses for the artifact to tap for red and then passes the turn. Phil plays a swamp and ends his turn. I play Wirewood Lodge and then cast Lanoir Druid, followed by Elvish Harbinger. I search my library for Geltleaf Arch Druid, put it on top of my library, and then cast Sumberwold Sage. Finally finished, I pass to Alex. I once again search my library for three basics and put them into my hand in my upkeep. I then play a forest, cast Sylvan Library, and then cast Mystic Remora before passing the turn. Phil responds to this by casting his very shiny Judge promo Vampiric Tutor, losing two life to search his library for a card and puts onto the top of his deck. Dave then proceeds to his turn. Dave plays another planes and then casts Seer's Sundial. He then ends his turn. Phil casts Sol Ring and then casts Phyrexian Rager. He loses a life, draws a card, plays a swamp and passes the turn. I draw the Giltleaf Arch Druid that was on top of my library and then cast it. Sadly, I don't have the 7 untapped druids required to steal someone's land and instead cast Green Sun Zenith, where X is 3. Phil asks me to find something to deal with Ground Seal, which I completely ignore and find Yavimea Elder instead. Better luck next time, Phil. Realising that my board state probably won't survive until my next turn, I pass to Alex. I rearrange the top 3 cards of my library and choose not to draw any additional cards with my library. I then cast Exploration and play an island under planes. Next I cast Darksteel Mutation, turning Martin's Arse Druid into a harmless little beetle. I then end my turn. Dave casts Magus of the Wheel and then passes to Phil. Phil plays a Swamp and then casts Liliana Vess. Noticing the single card in Martin's hand, Phil uses Liliana's plus one ability to make him discard a card, which turns out to be Zendikar Resurgent. Ouch. Next, Phil casts Gravecrawler, and then passes the turn. I cast Kamal, Fist of Crosa, and then move to combat. I attack Alex of Seton and Yevamir Elder, dealing him 4 damage, and then end my turn. I rearrange the top 3 cards of my library, and draw no additional cards with Sylvan Library. Next, I play an Island and a Plains, and cast my commander, Tuvasa the Sunlit. I then pass to Dave. Unhappy with his hand, Dave sacrifices his Magus to make everybody discard their hands and draw 7 new cards. Next he plays a Mountain, triggering his Sundial's Landfall ability and paying 2 mana to draw a card. Dave then passes the turn. Phil uses Liliana's minus 2 ability to search his library for a card and put it on top of his deck. 
It then plays Cabal Coffers, which is really scary in a mono black deck, and uses it to add 4 mana to his mana pool. He uses this mana to cast Liliana, Heretical Healer, and then casts Zula Port Cutthroat. Moving to combat, Phil attacks me with his Grave Crawler, and I agree to block it so that he can transform Liliana. Liliana flips into Liliana Defined Necromancer. Phil gains a life, and everyone else loses a life as a result of the Cutthroat's ability. Phil then makes a 2 2 zombie token, casts Grave Crawler from his graveyard, and uses his new Liliana's plus 2 ability. We each discard a card, and Phil then casts Graf Rats before ending his turn. I play a forest and cast Fidenhorn Elves. Next, I cast a super sneaky morph card, which totally isn't a den protector. I then cast Werebear and move to combat. I attack Liliana Vest with Kamal and Liliana Defiant Necromancer with Seton and the Evermere Elder. Phil notices I have enough mana open to activate Kamal's ability and decides to let both Lilianas die. Is that counted as a double kill or not, given that they are the same person? These are the questions that keep me up at night. I then pass to Alex. I once again change the order of the top three cards in my library and only draw one card in my draw step. Next I play Command Tower and Reliquary Tower, because I just can't have enough of that tower power. I then converse with Phil, who informs me that he will be able to knock Martin out of the game in his next turn provided that I don't kill him. Liking the sound of this, I cast Open the Vaults. Returning, Heliod, God of the Sun, Thassir, God of the Sea, Mr. Grimora, Eel Umbra, and Corrupted Conscience to the battlefield. Whew. I attach both of the auras to Tuvasa, Dave brings back the Thought Vessel in his graveyard, and Martin returns Zendikar Resurgent to the battlefield. Moving to combat, I attack a Dave with my commander, dealing him lethal and effect damage, and knocking him out of the game. What a great way to introduce a new player to the fun world of Commander. It's better if he learns to fear me from the start. I then pass the turn. Phil plays a Swamp and then casts Massacre Worm. Seeking to take advantage of the Worm's ETB, I use Kamal's ability to make seven of Alex's lands 1-1 one -one creatures, and then unmorph my face down card, Tribal Force Mage. I choose to give all of my Druids plus 2 plus 2 until the end of turn, making them all too big to die from Massacre Worm's ability. Now that is some spicy tech. Alex's animated lands are then destroyed, as is my Force Mage and Insectified Gilkley Forge Druid, causing Alex to lose 14 life and myself to lose 4. Plan foiled, Phil chooses to recast his commander, and then ends his turn. Martin plays the forest and then moves to combat. He attacks me with the Lanoir Druid, Elvish Harbinger, Seton, and Yavamaya Elder, and sends everything else at Phil. Before blockers are declared, Martin uses Kamal's ability to give all of his creatures plus 3 plus 3 and trample twice, making them all very big and scary. I block Seton with both of my creatures, and Phil triple blocks Kamal and double blocks Fidenhorn Elves to decrease the damage he's taking, a phrase that I never thought I'd have to say. I then take lethal damage, Phil takes 32, and a whole lot of creatures are destroyed. Phil then gains 5 life, and Martin loses 5 life, thanks to Cutthroat's ability, and Martin loses a further 4 life to the Massacre Worm's ability. Martin then passes it to Phil. Phil starts his turn by unearthing Corpse Connoisseur, putting Great Merchant of Asphodel into his graveyard. Oh boy. Moving to combat, Phil attacks me with his unearthed zombie, dealing me 3 damage, and then moves to his second main phase. He then activates Whisper's ability, sacrificing both of his zombies to return Massacre Worm to play. All 7 of my creatures are destroyed, causing me to lose 14 life, and I search my library for 2 forests and put them into my hand thanks to Yavimea Elder. Phil then plays Bajuka Bog, exiling my graveyard, and casts Swiftfoot Boots, equipping them to his commander. He then passes the turn. Martin plays a forest, and then ponders the futility of his current position. He then casts Ant Queen, draws a card from Zendikar Resurgent, and ends his turn. Phil plays Cabal Stronghold, and then moves to combat, where he attacks me with his worm. I block with my insect, destroying both creatures and causing me to lose two life, and Phil then passes to me. Martin plays a forest, and then casts Juniper Order Druid, who has received an errata to make him a druid. He draws a card, recasts his commander, and draws once more. Still not finished, Martin casts Garrick's Horde, drawing a card and revealing the top card of his library to be Karamet's Acolyte. Not finding the answer that he needed, Martin ends his turn. Phil plays a Swamp and then casts Noxious Gearhulk. He targets Garrick's Horde of the Gearhulk's ETB, 
and then responds to the trigger by sacrificing the robot and his commander to Whisper's ability. Phil returns Massacre Worm to play, destroying my beast, gains 7 life and deals me 4 damage. Phil then equips his boots to the worm and swings the creature at me, reducing my life to zero and claiming victory for himself. Good job Phil. Well that's it for another episode, if you liked what you saw, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Also don't forget to check out our Twitter, at 4commander, and feel free to take a look at our Patreon page, links are in the description. We'll see you next time.